All right, so it's your turn to put some of this into practice. With a single exercise, it should be pretty quick. All you need to do is define a single table. So here are the demands. Well, demand sounds a little strong. Here are the requirements. Define an employees table. So let's say we're a company trying to manage some employees. We'll definitely need more data than this to actually make it operational. But for now, this is all we need. Seven different fields, seven columns. ID, last name, first name, and middle name and then age and current status. And actually, I can't count, this is six. <laughs> so ID is relatively self-explanatory. It should be a number. I'm not telling you the data types, but you should know at this point what they are. So a number that automatically increments, it's mandatory so it can't be left off, and it's a primary key. Last name and first name are both text, which isn't the data type again. You need to use the actual term. And then neither of them can be left blank either. They're mandatory. But middle name, while it's also text, it isn't mandatory because not everyone has a middle name. So we can leave that blank. Then we've got age, which is numeric, and it is mandatory. can be blank. And finally, current status, which is essentially like their employment status, if they're employed or if they're fired. Then it should be mandatory, so it can't be null. But if no status is provided when something is inserted, it should default to employed. So we'll have two statuses, employed and terminated or fired or something. Um, I guess terminated is more professional. And so it should just default to current status is employed if nothing is uh, provided when it's inserted. Okay, so go ahead and define this table, type it out, try running it to make sure it works, and then try inserting some data as well to make sure that it works. Okay, if you want a solution, have it in the next video.